Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome to the video cast of the ministry Just Jesus Incorporated. I am Funke Alabi. It's a pleasure to continue our study of the revelation of Jesus Christ, Savior of the world. Today we want to explore the dual nature of the ministry of Jesus Christ, the double nature of his ministry. But before we start, as always, let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, we worship you today. Hallelujah to you. Glory to you. Praise belongs to you. Thanksgiving is yours. The ends of the earth must resound with the goodness, with the greatness, with the splendor, with the authority of your power. You rule and you reign evermore. You rule without contention. You are ruler forever. There is none to take power from you. There is none to contest power with you. And we, your people, give you the glory today. We enter into your word with humility to gain understanding of how to work in our times, how to please you with our lives, what the times demand that we do, that we may be wise. And we ask and we receive right now the impartation of grace to understand the revelation of the King and to understand what our duties are in this period. Father, let your power go through our lives, through our bodies, through our families, through our situations, through your word. Let the power of the Almighty begin a transformatory work in us as we look into your word, because your word says, blessed is he who keeps the words of the book of this revelation. And Father, we are here to keep it. So let your power go through and break chains in our lives. Let liberty and freedom be ministered to your people in abundance, that we will walk with God, walk in the spirit, knowing that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is absolute liberty. We give you the glory, Lord God. Thank you for victory over sin. Thank you for victory over the darkness of ignorance, the darkness of deception. Father, we thank you for victory over the lies of the enemy. We thank you for the truth comes into us to make us free. We give you the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. The dual, the dual nature of the ministry of Jesus Christ. In, in Revelation chapter 1, where John begins to write what he saw, in, in this unfolding, he, he said in uh, Revelation 1 verse 16, he saw the Lord, uh, he said in his right hand, he held seven stars and out of his mouth, came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. That double-edged sword, that's what I would like uh, to focus today's video cast upon. Double-edged sword, we see, we see this repeated in the book of Hebrews chapter four, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That which comes out of the mouth of Jesus 
it brings salvation, it also brings judgment. It will separate, it will pierce and divide the soul from the spirit. It will liberate the soul, but it will also kill the flesh. Also in Revelation 19, from verse 13 to 15, we see these words. Um, Revelation 19, verse 13. says he is dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of God you see and if I read on to verse 15 it says the armies of heaven were following him riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen white and clean out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. The Lord Jesus, he came to make sinners, princes, kings and priests unto God his Father. He also came to judge the nations. You see, it says that sharp sword which comes out of his mouth, he will use it to strike down the nations and he will rule. In his rule, there is peace. Also in his rule is an iron scepter in which he treads the winepress of the fury, the furious wrath of God is tread, trodden and pressed out by the Lord Jesus. He is the judge. He is the saviour. He is also the judge of all creation. He will bring forth the judgment of God and execute it. Uh, let's read one more uh, reference of this exact thing in Isaiah 63 verse 1 to 5. Who is this coming from Edom, from Bozra, with his garments stained crimson? Who is this robed in splendor? striding forward in the greatness of his strength. It is I, speaking in righteousness, mighty to save. Why are your garments red like those of one treading the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone. From the nations, no one was with me. I trampled them in my anger and, tried and trod them down in my wrath, their blood splattered my garments and I stained all my clothing. For the day of vengeance was in my heart and the year of my redemption has come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that no one gave support. So my own arm worked salvation for me and my own wrath sustained me. Here again, just as in Revelation 19, we see that the one who is mighty to save is also the one who in his fury and wrath judges the nations alone. He alone judges the nations. For this reason, in Matthew chapter 6, the Lord Jesus told those who have ears to hear not to judge. I shall read that. I 
uh, Matthew chapter 7, I beg your pardon. And I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse, I'll read from verse 1 to verse 6. Matthew 7, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way as you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. So you will notice that in these words, the first sentence is do not judge or you too will be judged with the same measure. And the Lord goes on to explain it is hypocrisy that tries to fix a brother. Someone else who is a king and a priest unto the father is not our responsibility to judge them because it's hypocritical. There are things in each one of our lives to deal with. There are things to rectify, to set right in us. And if we would focus on doing that, we could be of better use in our Father's hand to work by his spirit to help a brother. That is with the brotherhood. That is with the saints and the sons of God. But he goes on to say, do not give to dogs what is sacred. And so he's saying there is a need, even though we don't judge one another in, in the body of Jesus Christ, there is a need to be discerning about the nature of people that we are dealing with. There is a need to have a discerning of those who are as dogs and those who are as pigs. These are creatures that do not show any reverence for excellence. They treat everything as common. And it is the duty of priests to know and set a difference between the holy and the common. And so when he says to not judge, he's saying, don't judge your brother However, keep your eye open and be able to distinguish a pig and a dog and don't put holy things on the same level and in the grasp of those who have no respect for the things of God. That being said, it is written here in Isaiah 63, I have trodden the winepress of God alone. There was no one from the nations to help me. My own wrath has therefore sustained me. In Revelation uh, chapter, Revelation chapter four, I believe. Revelation chapter 5 says from verse 4 I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside then one of the elders said to me do not weep 
See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. And he had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. He alone must judge because he alone sacrificed. The difference between the ones who, the one who is worthy to judge others is his sacrifice. He sacrificed his own soul. He turned aside from fulfilling the desires of his own soul in order to feed us with life. That gives him the authority, that gives him the worthiness to take the scroll from the hand of he who sat on the throne. Upon that scroll were written the judgments that must go into the earth. And no one else was found worthy to pronounce the judgments of God except the Lamb. You and I are not in a place of worthiness to execute and pronounce judgment on our brethren, on people, on brothers. We execute a different kind of judgment, but I will go to that another time. We execute judgment on demonic spirits in his name. But that's for another time another another uh, uh, video cast right now we're talking about the release upon the earth of the judgments of God and how it is the Lamb of God who comes to save who also comes to judge and bring judgment on the nations of this world at the same time in Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 to 8, we see the judgments being opened up uh, and executed and put into motion by the Lamb of God. When he begins to break the seals, it says, uh, Revelation 6, verse 1, I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, come. I looked and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow and he was given a crown and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse came out, um, a fiery red one. Its rider was giving power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse, 
its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. When the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, come. I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades was following close behind him. They were giving power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine and plague and by the wild beasts of the earth. Some have called these the four riders of Apocalypse. It's actually a little more complicated than that because um, this account is also revealed in the book of Zechariah chapter 6. And Zechariah, when he saw them, didn't see them as a single horse, but as teams of horses, chariots. Zechariah 6 verse 1 to 8 says, I looked up again, and there before me were four chariots coming out from between two mountains, mountains of bronze. The first chariot had red horses, the second black, the third white, and the fourth dappled, all of them powerful. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, what are these, my Lord? The angel answered me, these are the four spirits of heaven going out from standing in the presence of the Lord and of the whole world. The one with the black horses is going towards the north country, the one with the white horses towards the west, and the one with the dappled horses towards the south. When the powerful horses went out, they were straining to go throughout the earth, and he said, go throughout the earth. So they went throughout the earth. Then he called to me, look, those going toward the north country have given my spirit rest in the land of the north. He saw chariots riding out from between brass mountains, bronze mountains. The bronze mountains uh, signify that they were coming from the place of judgment, as it's written here in Revelation. It is the same Jesus who in his coming has begun judgment upon the earth. It says that Reve uh, Revelation 5, John saw that the lamb who had been slain came and took the scroll. So beginning from the time of his dying on the cross for the sins of the world, as the Lamb of God. From that time, from the time of his rising from the dead and going into the heavenly places, seat, to be seated at the right hand of God the Father, from that time, judgment has begun upon the nations of the world. As much as the salvation of his kingdom has also come. I want to read the words of the Lord Jesus himself on this matter. Uh, I'll read from Matthew 10, verse 34. Matthew 10, 34 says, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace. Just a minute. 
Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Okay, and from 35, for I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And verse 36, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. So the Lord Jesus lets us know that sword that was seen, that double-edged sword, he comes not to bring peace, but to divide. As it says in Hebrews chapter 4, that the word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword that divides the soul from the spirit. Jesus says here, uh, I have come to turn a man against his own father and daughter against his mother and a man's enemies will be members of his own household. I came to divide the house. I didn't come to bring peace. On one hand, the salvation of the Lord uh, for all who believe converts people from from having no destiny from from being condemned it converts people to priests and kings of the lord god and brings people who believe to a high status in the in creation and in the realms and in the eyes of almighty god and on the other hand this same word of god brings destruction of judgment upon the nations of the earth i will read one last uh, scripture on this particular matter matthew chapter 3 verse 11 to 12 Matthew 3, 11 to 12 says, these are the words of John the Baptist. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the, into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The same one who comes after, after John, who is Christ, who is the Lamb of God, he comes to baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Those who are baptized with the Holy Spirit are not the same ones baptized in the fiery wrath of the judgment of God. Everyone who receives him is baptized in his spirit, baptized into freedom and power and reign and rule, and kingdom authority. Everyone who does not receive the word of God will be baptized in the fire of the wrath of the judgment of the living God. And so Jesus said, whoever in John chapter three, speaking to Nicodemus, he said, whoever believes will not die, but live eternally. But whoever does not believe is condemned already. The same Jesus at this time right now is releasing the seals of judgment upon the nations of the earth. We shall continue with where that leaves the church. What is our position in the midst of this on the earth? We'll continue in the next video cast. Amen.